Let's pray. Father, we come before you in this holy moment asking that you would just bless us with your presence. We want you to come. And just as it's so exhilarating to watch these two walk down the aisle, Lord, we want you to walk the aisle right now and take your rightful place on your throne. You are the king. You are in control. And we love you so much. And we ask that whatever happens today, it would honor your name. And in the end, you would join these two together inseparably. And you would make these two one flesh. We're thankful to be here, Lord, and we see it as such a privilege to be a part of this moment in the lives of Lloyd and Patience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just a quick announcement that um, someone told me to share just just a little while ago is that the order of events is going to be a little bit different than in your bulletin, but that's all right. So just to let you know, we changed things up just a little bit. Lord bless the two of you. God has done it again. God has drawn people together from all over the place. All these lives that are intimately connected with one another in all these intricate ways have come together and merged together to sit around and give our whole heart and our whole attention to God making two people into one flesh. And I just want to praise the Lord and thank him for doing this because he does it over and over and over again. And in it, there's a revelation of himself. And whether you've realized that yet or not, it's true. God is revealing himself to us right now and he's giving us a display of how he feels about us, how we're to be for him, And what a covenant is all about. And today we get to rejoice with with Lloyd and Patience as they dedicate their lives to one another, as they merge and become one. As Lloyd steps out from underneath the headship of his father, if you would, as he he comes out and, and goes out to make his own home. As Patience submits and comes underneath the headship of another man and gives herself away to that and to him to serve him, to help him. It's such a blessing to see this. And I want to draw particular attention to the Lord's relationship that he has with us. When God draws us together like this and he says, look at this thing, quiet your hearts, focus in on it, put everything aside, travel long distances and come and sit down and squarely look at this thing. There's three quick things that I would like to share that I think we should take note of. And number one is God's love for us. Go back, husbands, to the day you were standing in Lloyd's shoes. It doesn't take long for me to go right back there in my emotions, in my spirit, in my heart, to the day of my wedding. And I just want to say, Lord, what's going on in your heart right now, whether it's beating fast, it's come to this culminating point of desire. This is but a shadow of what God has in his heart for you and for you and for me and for us. It might sound overly simplistic. It might be in some people's minds just an elementary point of doctrine or something, but God is radically in love with you. And I want you to just just see that and realize that. And don't forget that. God is passionate about us. God's heart is 
is like what's going on right now in Lloyd's heart for his bride. He wants to take her away, make her his, and start a brand new life with her and give himself completely to her and to her protection, to her provision. Sacrifice his life for her. And God says, this is what it's like. Behold, I speak of a great mystery. It's Christ and the church. That's how God feels. Don't forget it. No matter how much the professing world of Christianity waters down the message, let's take it back. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is a radical verse of the heart of the living God. In essence, he's saying, do you want to know how much I love you? This is how much I'm willing to pay. The lifeblood of my son. That's what's going on in the heart of God. That's the picture that we have before us right here. It's going on in the heart of Lloyd as a shadow and as a type of the heart of God. God demonstrated his love for you, for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See the contrast. But God, because of his great mercy and the love with which he loved us, when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with him. By grace you have been saved. God is radically in love with us. And there's no greater love that a man could have than he would lay his life down for his friends. And our Savior didn't just say that. He did it. Praise God. There's no greater love, Lloyd, that you can have for patience than that you'd be willing to lay your life down for. And I know that's what's in your heart today. It's a blessing. We can see that in the groom. What about the bride? In patience today, dressed the way that she is, standing here with her heart. What's going on in her heart? Wives, go back. Go back to that day. What was it about for you? I kind of picked my wife's brain a little bit just earlier a couple days ago, and I said, what was it like for you? She said, I wanted to look just right. I wanted to be the most beautiful on that day than any other day. I wanted to be beautiful. I wanted to be acceptable. I wanted to present myself. And when, while I was feeling, I'm taking this woman to be my bride, she was feeling, I'm giving myself to be this man's wife. She was giving herself away. In radiant white. And in this, we see this picture. God puts it in the hearts of us. And he's showing us today. The righteousness. That God clothes us in. And requires of us. As his people. God both clothes us. And requires righteousness from us. Be diligent to present yourself spotless before him. Paul said, I am laboring to present you as a chaste virgin unto Christ to the church. Listen to a couple verses from the scriptures concerning this in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. A robe of righteousness. I think most of you know this, but there might be people here who don't realize this, but did you know that God Almighty can wash away all of your sin? There is forgiveness with God. I mean real forgiveness to where before God you can look like this in the Spirit. God can cancel debts. God can forgive sins on a radical level. And he can clothe you in a robe of righteousness. He can clean garments that you could never clean. He's into that. And you know how he does it? The scripture says he, they've washed their garments in the blood of the lamb. Who would think you could wash a white garment in blood? But the blood of Christ is that powerful that all who come to him in repentance, all who come to him and they're willing to cast down their life of sin, all of those who are willing to believe that he is who he says he is and that he's done what he said he did. And they put their faith in that and they radically abandon their life to him. Arise and wash away your sins. Be baptized. He can do it. And he's done it to so many of us here. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. says, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And Revelation 16, verse 15. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. It's a sober thing to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ, to have a robe of righteousness put upon you by God himself, to enter into covenant with him, to enter into allegiance with the King of Kings. This commitment that's happening today needs to be upkept on both ends. There's work to be done. This is the beginning of something beautiful. But as as we all know who are married, it takes maintenance. It takes a real living, pressing in, everyday, real life thing. And it's the same way with God. And he's showing that us today. He both clothes us in righteousness and he requires and expects and empowers us to walk in righteousness as well by the Holy Spirit. He wants us to remember that today. Are you keeping your garments clean? Are you walking in the light as he is in the light? Are you responding to what God is showing you? Are you abiding in Jesus Christ and producing fruit? Are you continuing in the faith? Are you being steadfast and grounded and rooted in his love? Or have you drawn a line and said, you know, this is a little bit too far, Lord. I think I'll stop right here. Today, in the name of Christ, I want to exhort you to continue on. Walk with the Lord. Keep your garments spotless until the coming of the Lord. He is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne of glory with exceeding joy. Trust him. And may that trust work its way into action. And may the righteous acts that God brings through your life by the power of the Holy Spirit cause radiant white to be seen, not just then, but now. Right now. Behold, 
what God is doing, drawing us all together again to see these things, to look. We see these types and shadows in the bride. Her heart wants to be so beautiful. It's the same thing that needs to be in us. Like virgins with burning bright lamps waiting for our bridegroom. And finally, in the covenant that's going to be made today, in the words of dedication that they're going to exchange with one another, in, in vows, if you would, or, or sharing their heart with one another, we see something else that God wants us to see. In Exodus chapter 34, God has the humility to call himself jealous. Have you ever considered how humble that is of God? To say, don't worship any other gods. Because I, whose name is jealous, am a jealous God. What does God have to be jealous over? Me? Am I really an object of that much affection that God would be jealous over me? What about you? God is jealous for you. And today in the covenant that Lloyd and Patience are going to make with one another, as they commit their hearts to one another and they say yes to one another, they are effectively saying no to so many other things. This is exclusive. And that's what makes it so beautiful. That's what makes it holy. Is that today you're going to commit your hearts to one another and it's going to exclude so many other loves. So many other temptations, so many other things that they are going to say no to as they say yes to the one thing of marriage. God is jealous. And there's some pretty hard words, some pretty scary things, some pretty radical exhortations in the scriptures from his apostles and people that walked with him in radiant white and were looking forward to the marriage supper of the Lamb, they said things like this, don't love the world or the things in the world. He who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. The world is passing away with all of its lust, but he who does the will of God will abide forever. Adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with this world is enmity against God? Therefore, whoever makes himself a friend of this world is the enemy of God. What do you think the scriptures speak in vain? His spirit jealously yearns within us. And in the covenant that's going to be made in just a few minutes between Lloyd and Patience, Please see beyond even what's happening right here. Allow the Holy Spirit to pierce your own heart and ask you where your allegiance lies. Are there any other loves? Is there anything else that's competing? Are riches competing with God? You can't serve two masters, it's impossible. You will either be loyal to the one and despise the other or you'll love the one and hate the other. There's no middle ground. Is it his words? Do you have a problem with certain things that Jesus has said? And you love Jesus, but there's certain things that he talks about that you just don't want to submit to. Don't separate Jesus from his words. Out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. If you reject his words, you're rejecting his heart. His words are the condition of love. Abide in them. Love them. If you don't understand them, cry out for understanding. If you can't live up to them, cry out for the Holy Spirit. But dedicate your heart to following the truth of Jesus Christ. And say no to any other love that would come between you and your Savior. Has he captured your heart? Like patience has captured the heart of Lloyd. Like Lloyd has has captured the heart of patience. Has he captured your heart like that? Then remember your covenant. If you're in compromise, flee it immediately. There's no time to waste. Put it behind you. 
Lay aside the sin and the weight that so easily ensnares you and entangles you and run with endurance. The race that's set before you. It's imperative. Let's look at these things. Let's watch this happen right before us as Lloyd and Patience commit their hearts to one another. Share your vows. Right now they're going to share their vows with each other in this holy moment. And give, just we can watch them, the overflow of their heart as they give themselves away to one another. Before God, our Father, family, and witnesses, I take you patience to be my dear wife. With the grace of God, I will press into his kingdom and guide our family in the way of righteousness and care for you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I am so thankful that God has led us together and gave us the opportunity to serve Jesus and grow in his likeness as one. Patience, I am no longer mine, but yours. I will love you, cherish you, and keep myself for you alone and be faithful to you until the coming of our Lord or death do us part. It is with great joy to our Lord that I stand here with you today to give myself to you completely. In confidence, I submit myself to your headship, and by God's grace, I will faithfully follow you through all of life's experiences as you follow God. I will endeavor to love and serve and obey you as long as we are both alive. As I look back, I am continually amazed and thankful how God has brought our lives together and made our hearts one. I pray that together we may continue to grow in the likeness of Christ and the presence of Christ may continue to grow in our hearts and home. For God, our Father, my family, these friends and witnesses, I joyfully take you to be my husband until the Lord comes for his own or death to us part. Praise God. They're going to have the fathers come up and pray for them, uh, for this commitment that they've made to bless this marriage from the very beginning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for this time of coming together. We pray that Lloyd and Patience can be faithful to you, that you will protect them and guide them. Just put your, keep your hand upon them. Bless them with all the will that you have for them. Father in heaven, I give you thanks. Thank you for patience and thank you for Lloyd. Thank you that they've kept themselves pure. We thank you for this day. I pray, Father, that your kingdom be advanced in them, that you fill them with your spirit. Fulfill your will in their lives. Lord, give Lloyd direction and wisdom to lead and guide. Sacrifice his life and lay it down to wash patience in the water of the word. Pray for patience, Father, that you would Help her to submit to him in all things, to be faithful to him, till death do them part, and that you will be glorified in their marriage. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Praise God.
I'm so honored to be able to introduce to you Lloyd and Patience Brubaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's sing a song. Come thou fount of every blessing. I need one of those uh, bulletins though. <laughs> 